five different reasons why men are keeping you around. Try not to cry. Number one, ego. Guys are going to do things that best serve their ego or in the best interest of their ego. At the end of the day, when you pass away and you know, people are, are you have your tombstone, it's not going to say he passed away with the happiest ego. But unfortunately, we do a lot of things to our own detriment, whether health wise, person, personal wise, relationship wise, that benefit our ego, even if they hurt other people. So as it relates to relationships and men specifically, right, they're going to keep you around for the purpose of serving their ego. How does it serve their ego to keep you around? Well, a couple of reasons. One, right? It always feels good, whether you're a guy or girl. It always feels good as an individual to know, hey, I am attractive enough. I am desirable enough that someone wants to be with me. Okay, even if I don't want to be with them, because you have to understand the ego boost is not just someone wants to be with me, myself, right? The ego boost is someone wants to be with me, even if I don't really show up for them, even if I don't really take care of them, even if I don't put my best foot forward for them. Because when I'm talking about why men keep you around, I'm not, we're not, let's get this straight. We're not talking about why men keep you around and actually date you. We're talking about the men that keep you around and they don't particularly want to take the relationship in any serious direction. They just keep you around for the sake of stringing you along, right? Stringing you along on this on this path and this journey where you you're you're always you're like the sad little mouse. You guys seen my TikTok video where I talk about the sad little mouse. You're like the sad little mouse who's just who's just who's just biting and it's it's scraping for crumbs and then he drops a little crumb of attention and validation and then you eat it all up and you're so sad you'll just take absolutely anything, right? You'll take absolutely anything. And so he continues keeping you around and continues stringing you along, just throwing you enough crumbs to keep you there, to keep you interested, to keep you chasing as crazy as it sounds. Right. And it's all a psychological thing. And, and then I know a lot of you guys have the question, cause I told you guys, I read everyone's comments. I read everyone's questions. I read everyone's, um, you know, points and things that they go through, right? And I really want to make sure I'm answering a lot of the questions that you have, right? And that you're curious about, because I know for you guys, one of the hardest things to figure out is, well, I know that he's playing me, or I know that he's doing this to me, or I know he's disrespecting me, I know he's not treating me right. But why? Why does he do that to me? Why am I the one not getting treated right? Because I see all these other girls get treated with respect. I see all these other girls get taken out on dates. I see all these other girls get all the things that I wish I could have. I get treated like trash though. Why? And why does he choose me to treat me like trash? You know, why, why, why? We all want to know why. So I'm here to answer for you why, right? And the ego is serving him in many ways when he keeps you around, because let's face it, he's not keeping you around and treating you well. He's keeping you around and either giving you the bare minimum or giving you less than the bare minimum. I'm not saying this to hurt your feelings. I'm just saying this to tell you the truth, right? And when he's giving you less than the bare minimum, right? There's an ego element attached to the fact that even though He's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, even though he's not taking the relationship serious, even though he's not treating you with respect, even though he's not being consistent, even though he's not taking you out on dates, even though he's seeing you late nights, none of it matters because he's just so amazing and awesome and attractive and charming that you continue to stay with him or be attached to him, even though he's not putting any effort into the relationship whatsoever, right? That's an ego boost. I want you guys to really soak that in. That's an ego boost in itself. The fact that he does less and gets as much as he possibly can from you, the fact that he does nothing and extracts as much, uh, you know, squirtle and access to you as he possibly can is an ego boost because he gets to look in the mirror and think to himself, how amazing am I that I don't have to do anything to get the girls? right? He gets to brag to his guy friends. How amazing am I? Look at this girl. Yo, you see how bad, even if she's bad, I see how bad she, I don't even be texting her back, yo. I hit her whenever I want. I pull up on her whenever I want. I could FaceTime her right now. I don't know if you guys have seen Instagram and, and TikTok's a crazy place, but I don't know if you guys have seen these on the street interviews where people be like, oh, FaceTime your ex right now. 
or this that or this girl can you can you get a girl to answer you at 2 a.m 3 a.m right now right and it's a flex to be able to say oh yeah, yeah, yeah i got a couple girls on my phone right now i could facetime them right now at 2 3 a.m i could call them right now 2 3 a.m they're gonna pick up they're gonna answer and they're gonna pull up wherever i tell them to pull up they're gonna pull up right that's a flex in itself that's an ego boost in itself so when you guys are asking why is he keeping me around even though he knows he doesn't want the relationship or he has no intention of pushing the relationship further in any particular direction that's one of the main reasons is that ego boost right that ego boost that he gets from being able to say hey i get access to the to this girl whenever however for however long I want. And in return, I give her absolutely nothing. That's how awesome I am. That's how much pull I have. That's how much leverage I have. That's how uh, convincing I am. That's how charming I am, right? It's all a personal ego boost where he can brag to himself and brag to his friends about how amazing he is for giving you nothing and taking as much as he possibly can from you. So then the reason I'm telling you this is because probably when you look at it this way, you'll feel disgusted answering his messages at 2 a.m., answering his calls at 3 a.m. when he's telling you about, oh, you know, I just, you know, I've been thinking about you all day, but it just dawned on me that I should call you at 3 a.m. And the revelation came to me that you should come over to my place or I should come over to yours right now at this second. That's what we should make happen at the second. But he bombards you with all these, you know, kind words and how amazing you are, how much he wants to see you and talk to you and speak to you. And then you feel so great about it that you go ahead and say, yeah, sure, come over. Or yeah, sure, I'll pull up. You know what I mean? And you make an excuse for him because he's gotten you emotional about the situation and the vicious cycle continues, right? It's, um, it's almost like taking a drug because you're high when you're with him and you feel like, oh, when he love bombs you, when he makes you feel good, when he talks so sweet to you, it's like such so much validation and you're so desperate for it that you're like high on the validation. And then when he gets what he wants from you, he doesn't have, doesn't have a reason to speak to you, doesn't have a reason to text you, doesn't have a reason to call you, and so he doesn't. And then you're sitting there kind of at that low point, just kind of wondering, oh my gosh, when's my next hit going to come? Oh my gosh, he won't speak to me. Oh my gosh, what's going on? And you're just chasing and chasing and chasing the next high. And number two today is confidence boost. Because the confidence boost that he's receiving when he keeps you around, right, is magical. When I say magical, I mean you have to understand what it does for someone to, I'll say what it does for a man, right? To feel like, okay, I'm here, I'm, I'm H'd, we'll call it H'd, okay? You know what I mean by H'd. I'm H'd. Let me go through my phone, see who I can hit up. Then he stumbles across your name. Yo, where you been? I missed you. Send. You respond in 30 seconds flat because you're so desperate for his validation and attention. Ah, uh, lit, lit, lit. And you say, oh, I, I just been this, that. I just been around. You know, where you been? Da, 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 ha, ha, ha. I, I ain't heard from you in a while. Oh, I just been busy. My bad. What you saying right now? What are you doing? You respond. In 20 seconds flat, because you're like so hyped up and excited that he wants to hang out with you again. He goes, ah, lit, lit. yeah, this, this is good. This is good. Yo, I'm trying to pull up on you right now. That cool? And of course you say yes, right? Of course you say yes. So he pulls up on you, right? Fake chat. A little bit of small talk, you make some jokes, all that. You know the, you know the, you know the, you know the stuff. You know the stuff, right? And 20, 30 minutes goes by. Now it's pencils jacking time. It's jackhammer time. Okay, he's gonna jackhammer you with this pencil for about two minutes flat. Okay, if that, maybe a minute forty-five, and then he's going to magically have an excuse. Oh, what you want me to pull up right now? Oh, your truck broke down in the middle of the highway, bro. 
Oh, sh- oh, my bro's truck broke down in the middle of the highway, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I yeah, I know you didn't pay for it. I know you didn't pay for AAA because yeah, yeah, you you've been going through some things. I'm gonna pull up on you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. I'm gonna pull up on you right now. We gonna we gonna get you straight now. Type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. Oh no, I'm no, I'm not even busy. I'm with a friend. You don't mind if I take care of my? It's my boy. You know, it's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just with a. Fr- we was, I was literally just about to, just about to head out anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna come get you. I got you right now. I got you right now. Yo, you know what's crazy? My boy, he got a flat tire on I-97. It's crazy. I, I gotta go. I gotta go help my boy out. Yeah, I'm so. It's crazy out here. I gotta go help my boy. So I'm, I'm gonna catch you. Like I'm gonna drop you out. Actually, can I drop you across? Like like on a, on a block away? Cause like I can really just like peel off onto the highway this way. But if I had to go all in your survey, it's kind of a lot of work. So can I just drop you at like the block away? It's not even. It's like it's like it's like sixty degrees. Like what is that? Like like like. 10 Celsius. You, you scrape. You scrape. You scrape. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, you good. Right? That's you. It's probably traumatic for me to re-explain that because that's probably you for real. But I say that to say, right, when he's driving off, right, he feels good about himself because he's like, yo, I just hit her up tonight. I got access to her tonight. All right. And it's an ego boost as a, as a man to be like, yo, I'm really that dude that I just go around and I get whatever I want from these girls. I'm telling you, the tr- I, I'm not here to make everyone people look good. I'm just here to tell you the truth. OK. He's driving around. He's got a big ass. He's got a clown smile on his face from ear to ear while he's driving around. You know what I mean? And the crazy thing about it is this is the crazy thing about it is that. They don't just take the confidence boost and keep it and be like, okay, I just want to feel good for the day, right? What they do, this is the craziest part. They take the confidence boost they get from using you and taking advantage of you and and your desperation for validation. They take the confidence boost they get from that and they go and shoot their shot at an even more attractive, more desirable woman. Because they have the they have the confidence from what they got from from being around you and being with you because they know how much you want them and it makes them feel good about them. So then they take that confidence and they go out and they try to holler at the even what we would, there's nobody better than you, but they even they try to go and holler at the girls that are even better in their mind than you. OK. There are no humans better than other humans, but I'm just speaking. um mindset wise right what's going on in their mind they say okay yeah you know she's mid but i'll have access to her whenever i want right because she's desperate gets access to you then he goes on right drives off and then the confidence that he has from getting so much easy access to you he goes and gets the quote-unquote bad i don't even know if i can say the b word but you know what i mean the bad bees the baddies the bad bees the baddies okay That's what he does with that confidence boost that you give him by giving him access to you every all the time, 24 seven, without any of the commitment, because you're sitting back waiting for things to change. And you're sitting back waiting for, you know, the magical moment where he's going to tell you how much he uh, loves you and cares about you and how much, you know, he wants to build this uh, relationship with you. How many of you have been there where you're giving a guy a confidence boost? Only for him to take that confidence and go holler at other girls. Number three, we have easy access. I told you guys this is going to hurt your feelings. All right. And I kind of mentioned it when I talked about ego and even when I talked about confidence boost, right? Why these guys are keeping you around. Do you understand that you're making it very easy for them? to keep you around. And what I mean by that is if there's very little resistance to him coming in and out of your life as he pleases to, um, you know, talking to you whenever he wants being inconsistent, however long he feels like being inconsistent, right. Being able to call you and apologize for, you know, a couple minutes and all is well again, Then he sees you, he gets what he wants again, and then he disappears for however long he wants to disappear for, right? That's easy access. And I 
I don't want to be mean and be like, oh, you're easy, you're easy, you're easy. But we just have to, let's all live in reality here. Okay? Because if these guys are keeping you around and stringing you along, it's not because the access to you is hard or difficult. Let's be so for real here. If the access to you was hard or difficult, he wouldn't be stringing you along on this long road that leads you to absolutely nowhere and have you all confused waiting for some destination and some relationship that's never going to happen. Okay? If the access was hard, it would be too much effort for him to bother dealing with you. Right? And that's the thing that I want to keep you mindful of. Because I know for a lot of you, you guys are scared to lose the guy, right? And because you're so, because you're scared that if you lose him, you won't get the validation anymore. You won't get the attention, right? Your self-worth will be down the drain because you'll be like, well, who's going to give me attention and validation now? If he doesn't want to give me attention and validation or even worse, he was giving me attention and validation. Now he doesn't want to anymore. Is there something wrong with me? right? And you're so scared of having to be like, oh my God, something's wrong with me. That's why he doesn't want to give me attention or validation anymore. And you're like shaking, right? In fear that he'll leave you, right? And because you're in so much fear, you allow him to continue having the most easy access that he possibly can to you because you feel like if you give him too much resistance, he'll get angry and he'll walk away or he'll get angry and he won't want to hang out with you anymore or he'll get angry and he won't want to be with you anymore. Right? And that fear is stopping you from standing up for yourself, is stopping you from pushing back on anything he says or does, right? You take the bare minimum. And so, for example, like I said, um, let's say he hasn't spoken to you for a week, no text, no call, no, uh, not even, he hasn't even responded to your Instagram memes that you sent him on DM, right? And then out of the blue on a Saturday night, let's say he's in the club in your city, and then he hits you up at like, you know, 1230, yo, where you at? I'm trying to pull up on you and you're in so much fear that like, oh, if I don't respond right now, he won't want to talk to me again. Or you're in so much fear that if I don't let him pull up on me or if I say no, then he's not going to want to give me the time of day again or he's not going to text me for the next two or three weeks. Right. And so you're like, oh, I'm just I'm just at home, you know, da, 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 da. I mean, if you want to come over, you can. Right. And you're so timid to stand up for yourself and be like. First of all, I'm not block or I'm not responding or I'm not. Or maybe if you wanted to just be like, I, I'm i not you're not pulling up on me at 1230. You know what I mean? And really call them out on it. And I'm telling you, like the guys know the people that they can do that type of stuff with and the guys that they can't. And I'm saying this from experience, not just from being me, but even my own friends. Like I, I have watched even my own friends, like literally pick up the phone at 2 a.m., 12 30 a.m and this is just me i have to be real with you guys and be like okay i'm gonna call this girl because i know she'll pick up right and i'll know she'll answer and i know she's not going to give me any resistance if i want to come over or i want her to come over right it's the uh, it's the it's the honest truth i don't know how else to give it to you guys in a way that's digestible except for giving you the truth but i hope that the truth is so bring so you can be like is that you Right or not, because I know for some of you guys, you guys are have enough self respect that that wouldn't be you. But for some of you, it has been you. For some of you, it's still you. And for some of you, you're trying to figure out how to make it not you anymore. Right. Right. And so the easy access, right, is a, a fear response to being so scared that you don't want him to leave you don't want him to you don't want him to 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 not want to be with you anymore you don't want him to not validate you anymore you don't want him to not give you attention anymore so you don't you don't want to scare him away by giving him too much resistance so you want the access to you to be as easy as possible so whenever he feels like popping in and out of your life he can pop in and out of your life and you won't say too much you'll just let him say sorry a couple of times say that he was busy for a bit and then you'll be all good Okay. And then you guys wonder why he's keeping you around. I mean, the access to you was easy. So why would he not? Right. That's going to be a reoccurring theme 
that we talk about, right? When you say, why would men keep you around? Well, based on the circumstances that you allow him to exist in, why would he not keep you around? What's the reason he would get rid of you? And that's how I want to you guys to your minds to start spinning. When you're thinking of, why is this guy keeping me around? Why won't, if he didn't want a relationship, why didn't he just tell me? Or if he didn't want to be with me, why didn't he just tell me? Why would he not keep you around? What, 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 what is he losing, right? Or what is he benefiting by actually cutting off the relationship? You're giving him everything he wants. You're making it easy for him, right? You're not giving any pushback. He sees you whenever he wants. He doesn't have to be consistent. He calls you whenever he wants. He doesn't have to put any effort into the relationship. He doesn't have to buy you any presents. He doesn't have to take you out on any dates. He doesn't have to do anything. And you continue to give him everything. So why would he stop that? Like, be so for real. Why would he not continue taking advantage of you if you continue to allow him to take advantage of you? That's the whole idea of why, like, you know, when we're talking about why men keep you around, right? That's the real question that you, you guys are wondering and that you're curious about is why do men take advantage of you? And then my response as a man, truthfully, I hate to make it sound awful. Why would he not take advantage of you when you're allowing him to take advantage of you? This is where I say the accountability has to come into play. And I know we don't like to talk too much about accountability because I'm holding up a mirror to you instead of telling you how you're, how bad your life is because of everyone else. Right. But why would people not take, and I, that's notice I said people, not just men. Why would people not take advantage of you if you allow them to take advantage of you? And I know it's like I said, I know it sounds bad. Let me give you an example, vice versa. Then you'll maybe be able to better understand me and what I'm saying. Let's say, and I want everyone to participate in this, uh, in this question. Okay. In this example on the YouTube and the TikTok chat, let's say, for example, right. There's a guy, right. You're at the, uh, you're at Walmart. Okay. You're shopping at Walmart for some stuff in your pantry. I don't know. Okay, snacks, craft dinner, and noodles. Maybe you can't cook. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you can't cook. You're shopping for groceries. Anyways, uh, a guy comes up to you and he's like, oh my God. And he gets on his knees. He's like, you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. You're so gorgeous. He's on his knees. You're so gorgeous. I will. He's in the in the Walmart store. Everyone can hear him. He's like yelling now. I have never seen a woman as beautiful as you. Your looks are stunning. You're like a goddess walking on this earth. I can't believe I would even be allowed to be in the same Walmart as you. You're just absolutely amazing. I will do anything for you. Can you fart on the ground? I will smell it and I, I'll, I'll just, it would make my year. I will pay you to fart on this pillow right here and I'll smell it. And just the essence of you would just change my life. Can you fart on this pillow right here? Please, please. So that I'll never have to be without your scent again. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, I'll sniff it so far up my nostrils. It'll literally, it'll be in my eyeballs and my brain cells. And just, you'll be living with me forever. Can, I'll do anything for you. Can I pay you for existing? I'll pay you a thousand dollars just to exist. You're so stunning. The fact that I could even be next to you or look at you is worth money. Can I pay you a thousand dollars for your existence? Okay. Now. I want to ask you, if that man took out $1,000 and said, please take $1,000 from my hand, this is yours. I don't want anything from you. Your mere existence is worth me giving you $1,000. Would you take the money or no? Be honest with me. He doesn't, he's not, in, he's not tricking you or anything. He just puts the $1,000 on the ground for you to pick up and he backs away. He says, please take $1,000. You're so amazing. And you're so awesome and you're so beautiful. Please just take the money. I don't, I don't even, I'm not going to do anything weird. I give you guys that example because I want you guys to understand that it's not just 
unique to men the idea this light is so bright behind me it's not just unique to men the idea of you know people will take advantage of those who are allowing themselves to be taken advantage of now obviously that example was a bit extreme you understand what i'm saying but the reason i give that example even though it's extreme is because i want you to understand that if someone is offering hey I want you so badly, or you're so amazing. I think you're so amazing that please, can you just take advantage of me? I don't even mind. At a certain point, you're going to say to yourself, look, I'm a nice person, but if you think I'm so amazing that you want me to take your thousand dollars, cool, I'll take it. At a certain point, you just kind of, you just kind of leave it up to like, well, that's your choice. I'm not forcing you to give me a thousand dollars, but if you're going to sit here and offer me a thousand dollars for nothing and i don't have to do anything in return i literally can't lose right they you, you're thinking to yourself i literally can't lose i didn't have to work for it i didn't have to do anything different for it and have to dress for it i didn't have to i didn't have to talk to you i don't have to respond to you you're giving me a thousand dollars in exchange for nothing then the question becomes why would i say no and that's what even a lot of you guys were saying in the chat. You guys were giving me reasons why you would say no, because the obvious answer is yes. And, and you start thinking to yourself, what would be the only reason that I would say no? Okay. And the reason I give that example is because switch that vice versa. Right. And the guys are looking at the relationship and saying, this woman is offering me free access to her 24 seven all the time. I don't have to make put work for it. And when I say free access, you know what I'm talking about. You know the access I'm talking about. I'm talking about your Squirtle, okay? I get access to her Squirtle. I don't have to commit to her. I don't have to buy her presents. I don't have to take her out on nice dates. I don't have to really be nice to her, right? I don't have to be consistent with her. None of that. And literally, you're like the old, you're like the man on the knees asking, take my thousand dollars. Your Squirtle's worth more than a thousand dollars, right? But take my thousand dollars. Just for your mere existence, you don't have to do anything for me in return. And so the guy's sitting there and he's like, are you offering me free Squirtle without having to do anything in return? And you're like, yes, that's exactly what I'm offering you. This is all happening subconsciously. And then he's like, uh, okay, I'll take it. Why would I not take it? It's free Squirtle. The same way you're thinking, why would I not take it? it you're, it's a free thousand dollars right? It's the exact same way they're seeing it. Why would I not take the opportunity to get free Squirtle with no commitment, no work, no effort? I get everything I want and nothing I don't. I give nothing in return. Easy, easy, easy bet, easy bet, right? Easy wager. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, right? That's how the guys are seeing it. Like I said, I know the example was extreme, but I just want to crystallize it for you that it's not just guys, right? It's human beings. Human beings will take advantage of you if you allow yourself to be taken advantage of. Human beings, human beings. Your girl's friends will do it to you too, right? They always talk about the team leader, right? The one who's seeking validation in the friend group is always going to do whatever it, it takes to get the team leader's validation. Okay? And sometimes the team leader is going to take advantage of that, of the fact that they know people will do whatever for their validation, right? That goes with, with guys and guys, girls and girls. It goes with human beings and human beings. Right? And the reason I say that to you guys is because I want you to understand if you... I want to make you aware of if you are the man on his hands and knees asking for someone to take your thousand dollars, don't be shocked when people come along and take your thousand dollars. Okay. At some point you have to take accountability for going around offering people a thousand dollars, hoping that they'll like you after you give them a thousand dollars. Cause that's not how it works. Okay. Right. When you offer people a thousand dollars for free, hoping that they'll take it and they'll like you and want to be your best friend and want to spend the rest of their life with you. 
That's not how that works, okay? All you're going to be left with is minus $1,000, minus some of your squirtle, right? Some of your body, mind, soul, and spirit. And they're still not going to want to be with you. So a bunch of time wasted. Number four, placeholder. A lot of times, I want to say this in a nice way. That's why I'm trying to think before I speak. A lot of times when guys are figuring out the girl that they want to be, because rest assured, guys eventually figure out, okay, I want to be with this girl. Or they have girls that they desire to be with, okay? In the process of that, Sometimes guys know they are not where they want to or need to be in order to get access to the upper echelon of women. I just, this is, like I said, I don't want to be mean here. Just listen to what I'm saying, okay? Remove your emotion from it. Guys, right, know that in order to get access to the upper echelon of women, what they would consider the upper echelon of women, okay, they need to be rich, be handsome, do all this good stuff, right? They need to have power, respect, right? They got to do a lot of work to be able to get access to the upper echelon of women. That takes time. So obviously in the time in between him getting there and him not being there and him working towards that, right? He can't just not do anything. Okay, so you come along and you give him access to you for free, like we talked about before. Very easy access. You don't do any pushing back. You don't do any talking back. You don't, you don't have any uh, standards, right? You allow him to come in and out. He can do whatever he wants, treat you however he wants. And he realizes that he can keep you around. While he works towards becoming the man that he wants to be until he finally gets to that upper echelon, that access to the upper echelon of women. And then he discards of you. Because you stop serving any purpose, because now that he has access to the upper echelon of women. Right. The fact that you will give him access to you is useless to him because he can have access to the upper echelon. So why would he still want you? He never wanted you. He just wanted you because you were easy to access at the time and he didn't want to put in a lot of effort. I told you guys, it's not, it's not, it's going to sting. It's not going to feel good. Right. And so for some men, they never get there. Okay. That's just not a God honest truth. Actually, 95% of men never get there. And when I say never get there, like they just, they, they don't have, like they don't have the looks, they don't have the money, they don't have the power, they don't have the status, they don't even have the driver motivation to even get there, okay? It doesn't mean they don't stop wanting those women. They just don't ever get there to get access to those women. But what happens is, right, they still see you as less than those women. So he's with you here, but he's looking at what he could have access to up here, right? So he's currently dealing with you because you're giving him a lot of free access, right? He's like, whatever, whatever. But he's actually not looking in your direction, even though he's on the same level as you. He's looking up in this direction at the Instagram models, at the celebrities, at Kim Kardashian, at, you know, this Instagram model. I don't know. Who's your man's favorite Instagram model? Who's your man's favorite celebrity? Who's your man's celebrity crush? Okay. Whoever it is, he's looking up here that if only I was powerful and successful and, and attractive enough to get access to those women, I would gladly be with those women. Okay. And uh, someone says it, it's all about looks. It's not all about looks. But what I will say is guys tend to worship particular women in particular um, places in life. And actually, the crazy part is sometimes even the women, it's not even really about their looks. It's about the fact that they only date other rich, successful, powerful men. So they see it as a representation for, of themselves to be able to um, 
date that caliber of woman who would only date the most richest, most powerful men, if that makes any sense. It still ends up being an ego thing. Number five, lazy. I'm not just talking about, oh, they're lazy. They don't want to put in work into the relationship. They're lazy. They don't want to, you know, have to be consistent. They're lazy. They don't want to have to take you out on dates. I mean, lazy as in they're too lazy to tell you what it is because that would require a painful conversation. That would require them to actually be honest with you about how they feel about you. That would require them to do something that makes them uncomfortable. And they'd rather smooth things over, not have you upset, not have you um, wondering why things are the way they are. They'd rather just sit back and let things happen as they happen. If you get used, you get used. And at least if you get used and he's not talking to you anymore, he's not talking to you anymore. Rather than have to face the facts of having to be like, yeah, you know, it's not working out for me or yeah, you know, I don't really see this going anywhere. Because like I mentioned before, all the things that you're offering him for free, for free, for free, for free, for free. He's thinking to himself, this is great. It would actually take more work for me to stop this from happening than it would for me to do nothing and allow this to continue happening. Okay. It gets to that point when you're offering so much all the time and asking for nothing in return, it really becomes a situation where he's like, well, this is actually harder to stop now than it is to continue because I don't have to do anything. This vibe, right? This dynamic has been established. Why am I going to switch things up? Why am I going to change any of this? And actually, if I do want to change any of this, it's going to take a lot more effort and it's going to be a lot more painful and uncomfortable because I'm going to have to explain to her why I don't really like her that much. I'm going to have to explain to her why I'm not that into her. I'm going to have to explain to her why this relationship isn't working out for me. And that's painful. So I'd rather just sit here and not, not do that. I'd rather just sit here and take what she has to give me because she's given it. She's definitely given it.